Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in part two of our How to Play Core Space series, we'll be looking at the key concepts of hostility and the dice. In part one, we looked at the crew dashboards, but now it's time to move on and start looking at the key concepts, including the hostility board and the combat dice. Let's get started with hostility and the hostility tracker. The hostility tracker is used to gauge purge interference. The higher the hostility, the more deadly and numerous the purge become. The tracker increases by one point each round marked using these black pegs. These pegs will also increase by a further one following the first shot fired by a trader each round, if any, as that noise is going to draw the purge ever closer. There are seven hostility levels on the tracker, and these are relaxed, guarded, watch your back, cover me, charge, kill me, and purge. Each of these includes a number of icons indicating the character type or types that arrive in the purge and NPC phases. And we're going to cover this in later videos. If an icon is followed by a number, that many characters will be placed. If the icon is followed by a die symbol, roll that die to determine how many characters of that type will appear. The hostility level will also determine the effect of event cards each turn. And again, we're going to cover event cards later. If the hostility level reaches purge, Turn the purge board over to the charge side. From now on, all the purge characters will have increased statistics. You'll notice that the hostility board has two sides to it. And the side you can see here should be used for any games using only the core set. And then the reverse side should be used when you want a bit more of a challenge and have incorporated the additional NPC and purge types into your games. On page 12 of the rulebook, you'll find this really helpful icon key and all the icons here will be listed on both sides of the hostility tracker board. And so this little icon will tell you exactly what they mean. So it's a, it's a good idea to have a good look at these and get to grips with what they mean. But after you've played a couple of games, you'll soon remember them all. That's everything we need to know about hostility and the hostility board. So now let's look at the combat dice. And there are two types of combat dice. These are the blue dice and the red dice. And in the core set, you'll get one blue and four red. And these are mostly used for assault, but you may sometimes need to roll them for other reasons, as detailed in specific rules. The blue die is always used as part of a roll. If only a single dice is required, then only the blue dice is rolled. If more than one die is required, then all additional die will be red Red dice are not quite as powerful as blue dice. There are two different icons on the dice. All these ones that you can see here represent a hit. And you can see that the blue dice has got another option where there's two hits on it. Each exclamation mark icon is a misfire. And these misfires will often have an adverse effect. And then finally, we've got the blank side and blanks are failures and have no effect. That's all we need to know about the combat dice for now, so let's now look at chance and randomization. In core space, you'll often be asked to choose a crew, trader, or item at random, and this is done using the numbers on the chance die to generate a result. Ignore the icons and arrows on the die for these rolls, and just look for these numbers. This is a simple way of deciding random actions and keeps the game moving fast. If you come up against a situation not covered by the rules or something that you can't decide on, just roll the chance die and see what happens. For example, if one member of the crew is affected by a technical failure and there are three crew members in play, you can roll the chance die and you can just assign each member of the crew a number. So for example, a one to two, three to four, five to six. And then you can roll the dice and it's a four. So it'd be this member of the crew that would be affected. The chance die can also be used to determine random directions. 
the chosen direction will be shown by the arrow on the face after it has stopped moving. Some rules will ask you to scatter an item or character. To do so, simply roll the chance dice and the item or character in question is moved a number of inches from its current position using the number and direction shown on the dice. If this would cause it to hit a wall, another model or another obstruction, it will move as far as it can and then stop. This dice is also used when we do the purge phase and we're going to go into detail about the purge phase in a later video, but just to give you an idea, this here is the symbol for the live one and during this time if you have to roll this, you roll the dice and when you see this symbol, that means that the live one is brought into play. This brings us on to the final dice, and that's this black dice that you can see here. And there's going to be a blank face, a single icon, and also a double icon. On the hostility tracker, if you see an icon followed by a number, then that many purge will arrive. So here we've got the harvester, and we know that two harvesters are going to come into play. Below that, we've got the devastator. And this has got the black dice icon next to it. So if the icon is followed by a die icon, you roll that die to determine how many purge will appear. So if we roll for the Devastator, we're going to get one coming into play. And then let's do the same for the Assassin. We're also going to get one Assassin. That's covered everything we need to know about the key concepts of hostility, combat dice and chance and randomization. So come and join me for the next video where we'll continue with the key concepts looking at line of sight, cover and range. Everything we go through in this how to play core space video series is taken from the core space rulebook and you can buy this separately or find it as part of the core space starter set. And if you haven't got this set already, then I can highly recommend it. And I've done a video where I've unboxed all the contents and gone through it in loads of detail so you can see exactly what's included and a little bit about the game. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll put links in the description below to Battle Systems website where you can get all their products, but also Element Games where you can save up to 20%. And you can also watch videos on how to build the terrain and all the different components that come with it. And then I've done another video where we go through all the tokens and cards in lots of detail too. I've also done videos where you can learn how to paint both Ariana and all the other miniatures that come in that core set. So check out those videos if you're interested in painting your miniatures and I can highly recommend doing that. I hope you enjoyed this video and it'd be great to see you in the next video of the series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. It'll be great to see you there.